Welcome back and thank you so much for watching. If you've not been here before, please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button for us. That'd be amazing. Um, I'm currently trying to fix up this BMW M5 that I bought from Salvage Auction. It was a complete mess when I got it. Um, so I'm pretty much at the, the final stages of the interior. The front windows are not working. Um, what I've done is I've bought an FRM module from eBay. Um, so fingers, fingers crossed, <laughs> fingers crossed that it works because I've got no idea. Um, it came from a different car. Um, it was from the same year, it's exactly the same part number, um, but who knows, it's always a bit of a gamble, isn't it? So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the battery, we're going to use that beeping, we're going to disconnect the battery, we're going to um, take out some um, beauty panels and stuff, we're going to pull the um, old FRM unit out, we're going to put the new FRM unit back in, reconnect the battery, um, and then we are going to have a look and see what works and then we will jump into coding because like I said it didn't come from this car so what you have to do is you have to tell it all about this car which is through ESIS uh, and then we'll jump into um, ISTA and have a look at error codes and stuff like that because there may be stuff that's stored in there um, from the other car so we need to clear all that stuff out as well so we'll do a complete clean sweep but yeah fingers crossed okay Got a relay clicking away as soon as I've disconnected power, that's unusual. Um, so all I'm going to do is um, put this little cap on that I got from the new batteries to make sure that doesn't reconnect at all. But now I need to make sure I don't shut the boot because if you shut the boot, you're not getting back in. Oh, is that complaining because it's trying to make this light go on? Maybe. Yeah, but I don't know what it's Okay, so basically remove the under dash panel so there are two um, screws holding it here it just pulls down you've got a speaker cable you've got the light cable and then you've got the OBD harness the OBD harness you just pull that aside and then the thing comes off uh, so we can get that out of the way don't need that do we the car's having a fit because I've removed the power disco time now oh, what's going on there oh it's because the charge is connected Because the charger was connected, I hope I haven't done anything stupid there. Right, then what you want to do is pull this side piece up, which we pulled earlier, and um, that pops up, there's like four things. And then to get the side access off to get to where the um, FRM is, there's screws um, in the side of here. So you take that screw out, take the handle off, and then there's another screw holding the panel in. And you can just pop that out, there's a couple of like retaining things. I need to tidy this up. And then under here you'll see the FRM. So now I can go to work about getting that out. So there should just be a screw at the bottom and a screw at the top as per this thing. So you can see it's like that in there. So there's a screw in the top and a screw in the bottom that we release uh, and then the unit will come free and then these are just simple push and release. You do it on a warm day because your fingers will thank you for it. It's really fiddly to get in there. There's not much space, and, and basically you can't even see it on the. Uh, you see that right in the middle there. You've got to get locating pins, and then there's two of these plastic nuts, top and bottom, that slot on. See, here and here to secure it. <clears throat> Pain in the backside. There's not much space for the accelerator pedal anyway. So this is the new one with the green dot. This is the old one without the green dot. You can see the part numbers are the same. 92736299019736299901. So what we'll do is we'll put this one in now and make sure it goes right way around. So it's basically going in that way when it goes in. Um, and we'll connect it up and see what life we have. Okay, so that's a little bit easier than I thought trying to get that back in. I think it's just wanting to get used to it. So it's all connected up. I haven't put the connectors back in. What I'm going to do is just connect the battery and see what happens okay so we've 
changed the battery or we've reconnected the battery I've changed the module um, it's complaining about quite a few things now so um, anyway let's just try the windows because I know I haven't coded this yet so let's go <sighs> So that's the wrong way around. So is this from a left-hand drive car? So if I hit the rear right, what if I do it from there, switches? Oh, I can't do that. Let's hit the switch. Turn that. So the individual thing works. So is it that this is from a left hand drive car maybe. Okay, let's try the front windows. So look at that, look. Passenger side, the window goes up. So that definitely tells me that this was wrong. But at the moment, it thinks the car's the other way around. So this thing is the one that came out, um, and I think the one that I've replaced has come from a, a left-hand drive, um, and obviously it was from a lesser model, so I've got all sorts of stuff on the dashboard, adaptive, um, headlight failure, headlight vertical aim control, stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is code it to my car. Let's go and get the laptop. Okay, so we're in ESYS now. Just going to try and connect to the car. Okay, connect. Very slow. Okay. Very DSPT. Okay, so now we have our list of. CPU down here, so come down to FRM. FRM. Should that have a CAFD? Don't know. Oh, we've got to activate the FA. Activate the FA. So my FA is now active, and then I can come down here. I'll have to inject. I have to inject the CFD. How did I do that? I think I've come across and say detect CF. Oh, blimey. Okay, let me do a bit of research on this. Hold on. So while that was coding, the adaptive headlight error has disappeared from here. And now, proof is in the pudding, so let's just do a rear window first. So that's the right side. Rear window. Left side. Passenger window. Driver's window. So the switches work. So now I have the power window anti trap function to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this. I'm going to jump out of ESIS. I'm going to go into um, the other one, whatever that's called, can't remember. And I am going to reset the errors and I'm going to reinitialize the power window. Actually, 
right off this thing, this thing. Um, and I'm going to clear the errors on here as well because I disconnected the battery when the charger was connected, which really could cover me. So, um, what you need to do is you to do it manually. I think what you do is you first of all, you get the crap out of your car. Ooh. So, it's in the down position, you hold it up and you hold it for 15 seconds. So, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and anywhere from 15 to 25 seconds. And then you push it into the down position and hold it. And what it should do is go down and then up again, which it's not doing. So that's working. So the anti traps working on that one. So let's try this one. So there is no, so maybe it's the anti trap on this side. So what we do is put it all the way down, but yeah, hold it up. 15 seconds. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and then straight into the down. And then if I do one touch, and the error has disappeared. So I now have one touch on all the windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this finish. I'm going to clear the errors and reread because I think I did stupid stuff when I <laughs> disconnected the battery with the charger connected. That wasn't the cleverest thing I did, was it? So now you can see that that has disappeared. So by setting the time, the fuel reserves just because the fuel, which is a bit daft because there's quite a tank. Uh, and then the drivetrain is the engine. So um, yeah, we're getting there. Let me clear these errors, reset everything, and start again. Oh, I've just noticed I've got this CBX E call, whatever that is. Is that the emergency call function? So, so I'm thinking it's because I've got the speaker unplugged that the IHKA is throwing, or that ecom thing is throwing, because the emergency speaker open circuit. That's because I haven't put all of this back together yet. It's all just loose, so they're just loose wires, and it's. That one there, that little blue connector, go to the speaker. So I will um, get that reconnected and hopefully that will disappear. But we're getting there. It looks like lots of um, big com AC compressor deactivation due to under pressure in refrigerant circuits. So I've got no air conditioning. But the rest of this stuff is all engine related. Throttle potentiometer short circuit to be electrical short to ground. Things missing. So there's some stuff missing not connected so i need to get under that there bonnet uh, and start plugging things in where they've not been so you've got um stuff around errors around um fuel pump because i've got it unplugged at the moment yeah but anyway we're starting to look good i think so if i come to the yeah 14 errors we're getting there cool Anyway, the main thing today was to get the windows working and the windows work. Let's just make sure the roof still works. Which it does. Perfect. Cool, so I'm happy with that. Um, front windows are working, which is a major thing because it's actually, I think it's an MOT failure here. Um, pretty sure it is. Anyway, so all it was was the FRM. Um, I got mine from eBay. Um, I think I paid about £35 for it. You can get them for, for loads of money. There's no need to spend loads of money. Um, yeah, shop around, get a decent one. It's two of those plastic screws, disconnect the battery, um, switch it out, switch it back in, um, and then just do your ECS programming. Um, if you have to inject a CAFD, inject the latest one, 
um, see if that works code it up if jobs are good and um, and then reset the errors on your thing um, I had to um, reinitialize the, the memory um, and I would just hold down the switch I'll, I'll put some instructions just there um, I'll put some yeah, you literally you, you wind the window all the way down you hold it up for about 15 to 25 seconds uh, once you've done that you immediately go to the window down uh, I think there's something that comes off on the dash I didn't see it I was concentrating on the switches I might try again um, and um, and then that should clear the error and you have to do that for each of the windows um, that isn't working so um, the way to tell whether you've got the anti trap function working or not is the auto open will work but the auto close won't work so it's the auto close that has the anti trap and it's fairly simple to check once you've got that all working because just wind the window up stick your hand and apply a little bit of pressure and the window will drop down again so jobs are good in so i'm going to button all this stuff up i do believe apart from cosmetics now yeah you know, tidying up like marks and doing some cleaning this crap and cleaning up some leather and, and all that sort of stuff um, apart from cosmetics the inside of this car is now done which is rather exciting but also rather um, nerve-wracking because that means I've actually got to get under the bonnet. I've been saying it for quite a while um, but I've got to get under the bonnet and I've got to start taking things off and reconnecting. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this then please um, feel free to hit that like and subscribe uh, button that would help me out immensely. Um, I'm moving on to engine work next so uh, it's getting cold which is always the best time of year to be doing engine work when it's bloody freezing isn't it? Um, so it's going to be cold all your hands. I've borrowed some uh, ramps so I can get the car up and it's got some axle stands Get the car up off the ground a bit further. So it's easier to work on and uh, Yeah, we'll see what happens next. Anyway, thank you very much for bearing with us guys um, See you next time